All right, so I have two problems. Ignore all the wrinkles, because when I'm done, there won't be any. But um, I've got it attached to the tack strip. Um, the center here is up just a bit. So the, the reveal right here is greater than it will be down here, even though this is all slack. That's the second problem is um, I've got to bring these down probably three quarters of an inch from about here where it's taut to the outside. So I'm going to take all this back off. I have the same exact problem on the other side. So I'm going to take all this, take these staples out, pull it back off, stretch this back down, and I'm going to pull down the center a little bit to try to straighten this out. <clears throat> um, then I'm going to put it back in and test it again. When it comes to the final fitment, I'm going to pull out the heat gun. And before I staple it up here, I'm going to uh, heat it up on the inside with the heat gun and get this thing really soft and uh, to where I can really stretch it on here and staple it permanently. And it will be, hopefully it will look like a piece of glass. Uh, we definitely have the ability to make them look like that if we can sort out all the issues on the way. But uh, in the end, it can look like that if I do it right. So I'm going to pull it back out. All right, so I started this thing thinking I would just film everything and then kind of edit it all together. But the filming of it kind of gets in the way if you're in the process of figuring it all out, which I am. And uh, would have been terribly boring. So now what I've decided is to generally complete it and then kind of undo it and explain what I've learned. So <clears throat> one of the biggest things I've learned is I didn't quite understand the whole concept of how the convertible worked. But really it's, um, it's three really separate components. So first is the webbing. And um, it's going to really set where this back, um, I mean, once you brace your frame and everything and you get it where you want it, that webbing is really going to lock in this fourth bow. And then when you staple it to the second and third bow, it's going to lock those in place too. Um, but other than that, it really is independent of everything else. In the case of mine, I didn't even use the quarters coming down here. And that may be a mistake, but you know, the one video I was able to find showing the installation of this top, he didn't use the quarters either. He didn't even mention the fact that he wasn't using them. He just didn't use them. And, uh, and I'm not exactly sure what they would do there. They'd be kind of funky. They would come off of here and down to this part. And <clears throat> I think if you... If you were to use them, you'd probably use them on top of the curtain, but below the top. But at any rate, the webbing is one of the three main components, independent components. Second one is the rear curtain or window. This piece right here is separate from the top. It's not connected to the top at all, except that uh, there are a couple bolts at the bottom that go through the tack strip that holds the top and the tack strip that holds the uh, curtain. But those two tack strips are independent. You can have the curtain installed and not the top or the top installed and not the curtain. And at some point you'll need to because you'll be adjusting them independently. And then the third piece is the top. And, uh, you know, it, it gets installed uh, sort of independent of the window. You don't even have to have it in, except that you do have to pay attention to is the top of the top covering all the stuff you don't want to see in the window? Are the sides covering the sides, you know, the stuff you don't want to see, the seams of the window? Uh, things like that. So you need it, you need them together in reference to one another, but not, uh, not necessarily any other way, at least not at this stage. So what I did is I got the webbing installed 
And uh, that part's pretty straightforward. I haven't really had to undo it at all. Um, I didn't connect the webbing to the bows. I, I waited till, the, till I was certain that the bows were lining up with the um, bar that, the pocket for the bar that's in the top. And uh, then I peeled back the top and, and set those bows in place by tacking uh, or stapling through the, um, through the webbing. I didn't use my bolts in these. There's two little machine screws and I just abandoned that whole idea and I filled in the um, space in there with tack strip and used that. <clears throat> it seemed to be much easier. Hopefully that's not a mistake, but we'll see. Um, after I got that set, I went to work on the window. I took this curtain in and out of the car like 15 or 20 times. So when you see videos or you read something about doing this that says, you know, you have to be patient and whatnot, you do. And uh, I am not a patient person, but you just have to be patient with it. And there was a couple times where I was convinced I was going to have to order a new one because I, I got it on the tack strip nice and pretty, cut the little notches for the bolts even trimmed off the excess because I knew it was going to be perfect and put it up here and it was a complete disaster. And I thought, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to, like, I don't have enough material to, to make it right. But, but you do. This thing um, is very, very stretchy when you heat it up. And uh, I've got a, I don't know where it is, but I've got a normal heat gun like a lot of people use. I use this port cable heat gun. Um, obviously, like everybody says, don't get it too close to the material. Um, but if you go inside, you know, once you get this thing, for the most part, where it looks right, you know, where the sides aren't puckering, and I have a tiny bit of that right now, but when I do the final stretching, or what I'll explain in a minute on the top, I think that's going to fix itself. But if you warm this stuff up, it goes from being something right now that's fairly firm and rigid to something very squishy. And uh, you really can take it and pull it up and stretch it. And you, you need to do that evenly. And I'm using, uh, I don't even see the tool in here, but let me find it so I can show you. Well, that figures. Oh well, it's a set of vice grips with a, with a little blade on the front that's about three inches wide that grabs like that. And you can clamp it on that material, like on this, I clamped it on the middle, pulled it over, you know, nice and snug while it was all warm and stretchy. Got it where I wanted it, two or three staples. And then I started working my way this way, working my way that way. I put this, the first, you know, 15 times I put this in, it wasn't smooth at all. It was like, you know, all these, it looked like ocean waves. It wasn't until the last time where I heated it up and it all came together, you know, really well. Um, so I used the heat to get that right. Uh, after I got this right, I took the window out. So I just unzipped it and removed it completely, got it out of the way. And then I worked on these, um, the quarters here. So, you know, attached them, took them in and out several times. I still have to now. So what I've done, let's see if I can... You can see this. Yeah, you can a little bit. So I've got uh, sort of some excess material here. And in my opinion, this needs to come down and over. And you can just see when I pull it down how it, how it tightens that up. But it also has to come over a bit. So I marked on here in chalk 0.5, so a half an inch down and a half an inch over. So I'm going to pull this all out. Uh, untack it 
Well, first I'll mark it on the tax strip. Actually, on this, in the case of this, I won't have to because I'm going to start somewhere about here. So from here over, I'm going to disconnect it from the tax strip, paying attention to where it is on there now. And then I'm going to heat it up and do my best to stretch it over a half inch and down a half inch. So that this point is, if it were on a grid, is a half inch down and a half inch over from uh, where it is right now. On the other side, I've got something similar, except I'm pulling it down three quarters of an inch. And you can probably see this is a little loose. So pulling it down and over is definitely going to fix that. Once I get those uh, put back in, I'll recheck the top, like close it and make sure that these things look reasonably good. And then uh, the next step after that is to move on to the um, cable. Yeah, I've got to get the cables in the pockets. They, uh, there's a pocket right here and one on the other side. That tensioner cable goes in there, gets attached, and then I can start attaching it to the front. Right now, uh, the top is closed and it's, the material's in there, but I stapled it to the tack strip on the front. I just, uh, I just sort of guessed where I thought it should be and put a few staples in it just to kind of hold it in place so I can check everything else. Out. But I think at the end of the day, when I make that final attachment up there, I'm going to pull it even tighter than it is now. It's, it's getting reasonably good, but it, it needs to be tighter, like tight like a drum. A couple other things to pay attention to. This pleat right here, uh, from all the videos I've seen, every top has that pleat in it. That pleat needs to be covered by the uh, wire on and which will be the very last thing I do. But in order for it to all work out right, that pleat really needs to be in the center of this fourth bow. And um, mine is very, very close to the center. It's up a tiny bit, uh, probably on both sides. But that's okay because what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to loosen the, like release the front of the top so there's no more tension on this pull this down just a bit and staple it on here where I want it, where it's supposed to go. And then I'll stretch the top material back over the front bow and use the leverage of the frame to, you know, to close it. Like when I close it, I want um, a pretty good amount of tension on it. When, when the top is in a relaxed position, not all the way closed, but I'm not holding it. Like if I just were to release it and let it sit here, I want it to sit up several inches from the windshield so that I know that I've got the, um, the tension I need, like when I actually close it and latch it, it's pulling off a lot of tension on this stuff and keeping it nice and straight and stretched. You don't want to do too much, but you don't want to do too little or it'll just be too loose. I don't think it looks as good, and I think in the wind it'll be maybe noisy and a little shaky. Um, so my next move now is I'm going to disconnect this from the front bow, peel the, or open it up, take all this material and get it out of the way, take the window out, and... Yeah, take the window out because the bow or the uh, tack strip that is holding in the window is on top of the tack strip that's holding the top. So in order to get this out and readjust it, I really need to take the window back out, which is not a big deal. It takes less than a minute. That's the other thing. The top originally has bolts like this that hold it on. Uh, the tack strip across the back. And there's no nut. So Ford just drilled a hole and drove this thing through that hole and it kind of threaded itself. They're all stripped. And uh, 
these didn't last very long. So I pretty quickly switched to, I tried to go to a quarter inch lag and that was a little bit too small. It didn't really help the problem. So I went to a 5 sixteenths. And I actually have two or three holes where I'm going to have to go to a 3 eighths. I feel like somebody anticipated this because the holes in the tack strip are definitely big enough to accommodate a 3 eighths inch lag. So I'm either going to go with 3 eighths or what I'll do is they're holding well enough to where I can get it to where it is right now. And um, one by one go through and replace all of the lags with a bolt and a nut to the, to the extent I can get my hand on it on the inside. I can put a nut on it. Some of them I can't because they're in sort of a concealed space back here, but there are big openings in the bottom of that concealed space. So I might be able to get to them. If not, it's just going to be a 3 8 inch lag and I think that's going to be fine. So I'll, uh, I'll show you what I do when I, after I take this piece out. In fact, I'm just going to leave this running so you can see how I take it out. So I'm using a staple puller, just a little handheld staple puller, and a pair of um, wire cutters. So I pull out one leg of the staple, or two sometimes, or break them off, whatever. And then um, I grab them with the wire cutters to get out the rest of the way. The other thing is, um, because I've already got this to a point where the tension is reasonably good, I went ahead and marked it. So I ran a piece of chalk down here, and there's a white line. I don't know if you can see that. There was, so when I put it back on, I have at least something to reference by because there's my top didn't come with any sort of indicators of where the front should be or where the center is. So when I set the center, I put a mark on it. But also, uh, these two seams that run the length of the top, there's actually a little uh, depressed area in, the, in this uh, headrail where those cross over the headrail. So it's pretty easy to see where they go. But again, I marked center too, so I've got a couple reference points. It is important to be able to put it back to where you just removed it so that you're kind of always going back to a, a, some sort of reference point, or at least something that gives you some idea of whether it's right or wrong, too tight, too loose, whatever. <clears throat> so now that that's up, I'm just going to get it out of the way so it's not hanging on my head. I'm going to pull this back down so I can get up under the window, but I'm not going to lock it in. I want it to be kind of loose. I'm going to go grab my So now I'm going to unzip this top of the uh, window. take out all the screws.
So now the curtain is completely loose. I'm going to maneuver it out of here. Top is a little bit in the way. I'm just going to set that on the trunk. And now these pieces, the two sides, you can work from the outside of the car. Because if you're like me, you're not used to crawling around in concealed spaces, the, uh, this process will wear your ass out because you're constantly in and out of the car and crawling. The other thing is when you pull out staples, in my case, I don't have, I took my seats out to do this. So the car's pretty empty. I'm dropping all the staples in the car just to keep them out of the garage and keep me from running over them. I'm going to vacuum out everything in the car anyway, so it makes sense that they reside in there. I'm going to move this glass or plastic so I don't mess it up. All right. So here it is. I've already cut this so it's pretty flush with the bottom of this uh, tack strip. And uh, I'm going to pull out all the staples back to this point and when I put it back together I want this to be a half inch that way which is really going to be right here at the end. Right now I'm a half inch away from it. So a half inch that way and then down about a half inch as well. And I feel like once I put it back in, that'll be the right amount of, it'll be in the right location to give the right amount of tension across this area that kind of seems to be missing right now. But there's no rule about it unless you've done, you know, a bunch of these. You're, you're at the mercy of just trial and error. Even the guys that have done a bunch of them are still at the, ooh, man are still at the mercy of trial and error. Um, they just probably don't have to try as many times. The other thing is now that I'm, when, when you're stapling in this or the front bow, you're using a 5 16 staple. And if you're stapling in the, in my case, the second and third bow or the fourth bow you're going to be using 3 8 inch staples so be sure to to change those if you put the longer staples in this they bottom out and the staple kind of gets all funky at the top you know it just gets kind of deformed Now left a couple little chunks of steak in there. All right. And I think I'm going to heat this up. I haven't tried this uh, at this particular location yet. But I did notice when I was putting the window in, this material, the bottom part of the window and the, top, the material above the window, got very pliable from the heat. And that's what we're after.
I wouldn't have a problem pulling the material down, like in that direction, but pulling it over in that direction will be challenging without this material being able to stretch. And it's cold here, it's 58 degrees outside, it's probably even a little colder in the garage. Um, normally, I have a heater running in here, but I've got the door open, so I don't have that going on right now. Also, if you're doing this, have your stapler ready. Like staples in it, air on or power on, depending on what you're using. Because I've heated stuff up before and then went to grab the stapler. It wasn't even close to being ready. By the time I got it ready, it was all cooled off. So. Remember, my goal is to stretch this thing to the end of the tack strip. And I'm going to use vice grips to hold on to it. Another thing, if you're going to grab something like this with vice grips, make sure you grab it well. Because when it pops off there because you didn't grab it well enough, it hurts like a son of a bitch when it hits you in the stomach or whatever. This is, is the voice of experience right here. Because I've already done that a few times on this. All right, so it's stretched really well. Um, just having trouble holding it. Almost need two people. One person to stretch it, one person to staple it. And I'm using the vice grips to sort of, as a lever, where I'm hooking the front of the vice grip over the metal edge of the tack strip and bending it down, but I'm not able to grab it well enough. I need my other tools. Oh, oh here they are. This is the tool I was talking about. All right, more heat. So the nice thing about this tool is I can grab something and I've got that nice straight edge that I can use to pry against and uh, get a really short radius on that turn. But for this type of thing, it's, it gives you plenty of leverage to, um, to stretch something, you know, when you're trying to just move it another quarter inch or something. So this is really stretchy now.
say it's really stretchy, but damn it. Yeah. Fit. There's no good way to hold this. got it over. Definitely didn't get it down, but over might cut it. I got it down a bit. Now I'm going to pull it in the other direction. I was able to get one staple in there, and it's now I'm right at or a little bit past the edge of the metal part of this. So now I just need to pull this stuff back in place. I just pulled that other staple out. But I think I probably stretched it enough where it's going to be a little more manageable now. Alright, I'm going to have to do this more like a little bit at a time. So I'm going to go up an eighth of an inch right here while pulling some, some tension on it. Well, I certainly got it moved. <clears throat> so now we can check it in the car. I've got, I'm going to have to um, cut this slot out so that that bolt will get in there. I'm going to put one staple in here to nail it. 